With 2022 in full swing, many clients are now starting the job with a new year or a recent promotion, and many times these new changes can bring new questions. Some recent questions I've received range from, so how much should I put in my 401k versus my brokerage now, to my company is offering me employer stock or restricted stock units. What should my game plan be? Although each client's individual situation requires tailored advice in regards to what they want to achieve, there are some high-level strategies and tax considerations that everyone should be aware of. And at the top of my list, and a fairly timely one at that, is considering current and future tax implications of your retirement account options. With a new job, it's worthwhile asking or looking into if your employer offers the ability to contribute to a Roth 401k. The money you could contribute to this account is after-tax money, meaning you pay taxes on in the current year. In exchange, when you go to withdraw the funds in the future, that money does not count towards your taxable income. Keep in mind, tax law and tax rates can change at any time. You don't want your financial strategy reliant on existing law staying as is for the rest of time. Because there are no guarantees. Given that you do not have direct control over tax laws now or in the future, it's smart to strike a balance between the various tax advantage account types you use. If you've maxed out your traditional 401k for years, you may have a huge chunk of your net worth that you plan to tap into once you retire that will be subject to income taxes in those future years. Again, it's all about balance. Sitting down with a professional that can optimize both your financial and tax plan is invaluable. When discussing equity compensation and restricted stock units, these can be extremely useful tools when it comes to building wealth. And having a lot of exposure to a single company stock isn't inherently a bad thing. But we often see people with positions that overexpose them to concentration risk. You can easily tie too much of your portfolio into one company, which leaves you open to some big financial damage should something negative happen to your company in the future. If your goal is to increase your probability of successful outcome, which for most people means having money for your long-term goals and an ability to fund your lifestyle without running out of money in your lifetime, then seek to set up a systematic, unemotional investment plan that divests from concentrated stock positions and into a diversified portfolio. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you next time.